Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy. This is the A2 of Thorburn Van Heerden A3 knife, uh, with a big ol' one clip blade. First off, I want to thank my buddy Mike for sending this little guy along. It's not an inexpensive knife, it's a very nice one, so I'm glad to have a chance to handle one. The other thing that I gotta point out is that A2 here is the, uh, it's a, the name for the collaboration between Andre Thorburn and Andre Van Heerden. Uh, they are two South African knife makers, they're both really well known in and of themselves, and here they're working together to create something excellent. So there you go. Um, also, I got to point out there is no disassembly for reasons we're going to talk about later, but basically it's just not a, a knife you can disassemble. Tiny screws, heavy thread locker. Oh, we're coming back to that. Rest yourself assured. But let's go ahead and jump into a uh, size comparison here. Of course, as always, Ontario rat number two and your rat number one to give you a sense of perspective. This is not a small knife. It may look it from afar, but holy crap, is this guy big. So, uh, yeah, that's that, That's pretty large. Uh, right here, of course, for tradition's sake, is your Spider Code Delica and your PM2. So, again, bigger than your PM2. Um, my token, oh my god, is this thing huge knife, is the uh, ZT452CF, which is bigger than this guy, but not by uh, all that much. And another knife with a crazy action is the Grimsmo Norseman which is in many ways sort of a natural competitor to this. It's in the same price range. It's in, yeah. So anyways, uh, let's go ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of the little A2A3 here. Okay, so on the good side, first off, I like the clip on this guy very much. Um, Thorburn has a tendency to make these very kind of shallow carry, uh, loopy sort of clips that just aren't that great, but this guy has good ramp. It has a really nice amount of rays here. It's on some sort of a G10-ish pillar, which is just great, and honestly, it's a solid clip. It works really nicely in the pocket. I can't really argue with that. I mean, the clip does. The knife itself's a little thick, but we'll get there. Um, but anyways, so that's nice. Um, next thing, the, um, well, we're back here. This back spacer is great. It's uh, Most of the knife is made of a very high quality carbon fiber. I mean, you can see it looks beautiful. You can see the CF texture nicely. But um, the, the uh, back spacer here is a lightning strike carbon fiber, which has little bits of some sort of a wire inlaid into the carbon fiber. Nate, it adds a little bit more visual interest back here. Speaking of which, this anodization on the liners, and you can see it goes throughout, because this is a liner lock knife, um, is great. It's a nice blue color. It's not a super, like, pop out of the, you know, it's not a really super poppy blue, but it, it is enough to provide some visual interest. If this were just titanium, it would just be the 50 shades of gray knife, and, you know, uh, uh, although that's kinky, it's not something you necessarily want for visual interest. So, adding this in there, why did I go there? Adding this in there is a <laughs> beautiful, beautiful thing. Uh, it's subtle, but it does a nice job bringing it out there. Speaking of doing a nice job, overall, the fit and finish on this knife is pretty damn good. So, for instance, um, oh, you've got this beautiful centering going on here. It's right down the freaking middle. That's great. Um, the jimping on this guy is also really great. I'll see if I can show that off here. But, uh, come on, focus. There you go. You see that the jimping here is not just cut in terms of, you know, it's not just, like, gashed in there. These are very, very careful milling cuts. There we go. I mean, that's nicely done, and they pretty uniform in terms of width. I mean, this took time. Somebody really cared about that when they did that. I like very much the flipper tab here. We can see has some holes in it. It's not something that's necessary, but it does do the trick, and frankly, it's a point of visual interest again. That's nice. The uh, texturing on the flipper is there as well. Um, you can see here's a number. It's, uh, this is a number three. I don't know what the three is, but it sure is. Um, so there you go. Um, you can see that the carbon fiber has been contoured as well as milled out in these little areas. There's this pattern here of there's a deeper mill and there's a, a shallower mill with a larger bit. And then there are little drill outs here where you could actually see under the right lighting condition a little bit of the blue um, from the underneath the liners here. Also very nice. And then one thing I'm going to see if I can show off for you here is actually the inside of the liners have a very nice finish to them. Let's see. I don't know if I'm going to be able to show this off on camera here. It's always odd. But there, there's sort of a satiny finish to them. It's a, a little more scratchy than some, but you know what? It's a pretty finish. You look in there and it's like, oh, that's nice. Not only did they, you know, cut the material out, but they gave a damn when they did so. 
So that's good. Um, next thing, the uh, pivot on this guy is a Torx pivot. Um, it is not one of the uh, five-hole pivots of the stupid T30, very shallow pivots that South African makers tend to use. This is just a Torx. It's a tiny Torx, and we'll come back to there, but I appreciate the fact that this is not a proprietary pivot. That's very nice. Then finally, the blade on this guy is very nice in a bunch of ways. You can see that it's got a two-tone finish with a uh, polished flat and then a uh, satin on the grind itself which is good. Um, the shape on it is also nice. I am a sucker for a good Warncliff blade, as you all know, and this is a good Warncliff blade. You get a little tiny bit of belly, but you get all this cutting power of a Warney, which is nice. The steel on this guy is M390, which is a great steel. Absolutely top-of-the-line sort of steel. Um, the grind on it is actually nice and hollow, um, or at least, you know, I'm not 100% sure... No, it's hollow. It is hollow. Um, but either way, um, it is a very good grind for cutting things. It comes to a relatively thin point behind the edge here. If we look at the tip, that's pretty thin right there. And so this is a knife that actually can cut things, which is surprisingly rare in 2017 for whatever reason. Um, and so just overall, the blade on this guy is very nice, and it lends it to, you know, an ability to actually cut things if you need to. Um, it's, it's great in that way. So uh, to me, that's what's good here is you get a nice blade. You get a Torx pivot. You get some very nice little bits of fit and finish and detail here. You get some nice subtle anodization over here on the liners. Get a nice backspacer. You get a very nice clip. So to me, that's the good. Let's talk about the grade here. So on the grade side is absolutely 100% the action of this knife. This is a knife that's running on the IKBS, the Icoma Corth bearing system, which are just loose balls inside the pivot uh, in some grease. Uh, this is double row IKBS, and it's using ceramic balls, uh, which, again, will smooth things out a little bit further. I wish I could do a disassembly to show that off, but if you look at some of my other IKBS videos, you'll, you'll see that. But basically, it leads to a very smooth action. Uh, and so when this knife is popped open, it shuts with relatively little effort. It's not quite as drop shot effortless as... Uh, non-IKBS knife. It's not a finger guillotine in the same sense, but some people actually prefer this. What's really, really great, though, here is the detent. This has the cleatest detent. Well, I, the only detent I like more than this was on a Peter Rosenti custom knife, um, and this is right up in there. Um, I, I would put them head-to-head -head any day of the week. It's just such a, you put pressure, 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 and then it cleanly just pops, and the blade deploys... I, if the whole world could be better in terms of detent, this is what I would want it to look like. The detent on this guy bests the Grimsmo Norseman, bests the Rasp, the Shirogorov, anything. This is an incredible freaking detent. And so to me, what is great here is 100% this action, which is just incredible. So there you go. That's what's great. Let's talk about the bat. Okay, on the bad side first, some serious nitpicks. These are absolutely not functional issues, but they're things I'm noticing, and on a knife that's this damned expensive, are things that begin to be like, okay, you need to be getting every little thing right. So for instance, on the flipper tab here, the jimping is not even. You see some marks go further through, some marks don't. This may be an issue with the chamfering more than the jimping, but whatever it is, it is starting to get to be an issue. Next thing, um, if you drag your finger across the back here, run a, on a really high and knives, generally you feel just one connected surface. And in fact, on a Thorburn Custom, I had you did. Um, but the thing is, this guy, you feel very much some of these transitions between carbon fiber and titanium and whatnot. Is it a big deal? No, but it is something that bugs me. And then similarly on the pivot here, you can see that one of these lobes is a lot flatter and a lot lower than the other lobe. It's not the case on the other side. So that's making me think this is a handmade piece, but still, this is a step away from perfection. And when you get into this kind of price point, starts to bug me. Next thing, this knife is huge. You kind of need to understand that. I mean, depending on how you're measuring and how angry the cop that's measuring is, you're coming in anywhere between 3.75 and 4 inches. Um, That's a big chunk of freaking blade, and it's also a very long knife overall. So that's something you really do have to keep in mind. Next thing, the um, milling on the carbon fiber here is beautiful at some level, but it's also something I'm a little bit afraid of, that this could be damaged, and this could, you know, get a, if you were to put this knife in the pocket with, say, your keys or some hard object, that could chip away at the carbon fiber, and then you've got CF splinters, and that's, that's no good. So, there you go. Next thing is that the availability on this knife is very low. Um, these are handmade knives, according to their website, and so um, you're not going to be able to just run down the Blade HQ, so to speak, 
can pick one of these little guys up. Um, they're interesting knives, but you kind of have to find them on the secondary or get lucky. Uh, so keep that in mind. Next thing, the price to me is very high on this knife, and I'm kind of torn on the price point here, because it's, uh, I'm seeing these, I wasn't able to find this exact knife, and my buddy got it in a raffle, so he's not quite sure, but I'm seeing these knives going someplace in the $750 to $1,000 range. Um, you know, $800 seems to be about the area. Um, and look, at some level, this makes complete sense, because these are two very well-known makers. They are, according to the website, entirely handmade knives, and if you just look at the knife in isolation, they're there is a lot of work here. There are a lot of details. But the thing is, if you look at it relative to other knives out there, it doesn't make as much sense. Uh, this knife is a great knife, 100%, but I don't know that it's 600 bucks greater than the ZT452. Um, and especially with some of those little imperfections in there, that's getting to be a price where I really am expecting something approaching perfect. They haven't quite hit the mark there. So, look, I don't know whether the price is high, whether I'm asking too much, whatever it is, but the price is way the heck up there, and that's something you're going to have to think very hard about. Would you be happier with this knife or with this knife, which is, you know, worse in a number of ways, uh, particularly the action, but you're getting a whole lot more value. There's no value here, I'll say that much. Then finally, the thing that bothers me most about this knife, um, well, I, in the bad side, is the thickness of this knife. This is a very, very thick knife. I mean, comparing this to the Spyderco Delica, for instance, in terms of thickness, this is relatively tiny. And part of this is due to the, 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 the contouring of the carbon fiber and whatnot. It's thicker than the Rat too. This is almost as thick as your Medford Murata here. That's a serious bit of thickness to it. The problem is, you know, thickness can be a beautiful thing, um, but the issue is that usually it means great ergonomics, and in this case, it doesn't necessarily. I mean, it's fine in the hand, but I got hot spots off the clip, and it just doesn't click well. I don't, like, the flip a tab is too close, so what we have here is a, a kind of an odd duck. It's a very thick knife that doesn't feel very great in the hand. It's okay, but... So, I don't know. Um, the, the thickness is not something that brings me any joy. It makes it a pain in the neck to pocket, and you're not getting stellar ergos as a result. So, to me, that's that's probably my biggest issue that's not ugly. So, uh, there you go. That's the bad. The thickness is hardcore. The price is up there. It's maybe justifiable. It all depends on how you look at the world. Um, the availability is low. I worry about this carbon fiber milling's long-term durability. It's a very huge knife, and there are some fit and finish nitpicks that are... Starting to get a little weird at 800, 900, 1000 bucks. Let's talk about the ugly, because sadly, there's ugly, and you guys know where I'm going. Okay. The ugly thing here is that this knife is basically not user-maintainable for two reasons. First off, they're using stupidly small screws. These are Torx T5. T5 is a tiny little freaking Torx bit. I think T6 is too damn small to use in anything that isn't a watch. Um, and they don't use Torx in watches anyways. But T5 is ridiculous because, you know, these are very easy to strip. It's just, it's ugly as heck. The other issue is that they're using a bunch of thread locker with these little T5 screws. These are so small that you can't necessarily do the soldering iron trick. I mean, this is just so ugly. And the end result is that this knife is basically not user-maintainable. I was about to buy an A2 knife off of a buddy of mine, but the screws were stripped. And he was trying to source screws for this from somewhere, and he just couldn't do it. Um, it took forever and ever and ever, and it was just deeply ugly. And so I kind of just realized, you know what, okay, I'm, I'm not a buyer here. This is not interesting. And when a very small outfit, this is two guys in South Africa, makes a knife that is needing user service because it's IKBS with an internal stop pin, and then prevent user service by using bad fasteners and permanent thread locker, Oh, man, is that ugly. This knife is kind of disposable in that sense. Maybe you'll be able to send it back to the makers, and they'll be able to fix things up. But, oh, boy, is that terrible. This is a $900 knife, and they don't, you know, they're not letting you maintain your investment. Ugly. And so, to me, that's the ugly, is that this knife is just a ticking time bomb, <laughs> so to speak. So, um, there you go. Let's jump final conclusions here. This is a knife that's actually been a little problematic for me to review, um, because I really, this defied my expectations. I expected to be in love with this freaking knife, because at some level, what's not the love? It's got a great action, nice materials, good fit and finish, well-known makers, it's got a warty blade and a super steel, oh man, this should be where it's at, and it is an incredible knife at a very real level. All my nitpicking aside, this is incredible knife making, sure, but for me personally, it really ended up falling flat. 
Um, you know, I, I, I have zero temptation to pick one of these up uh, for whatever reason. Well, actually, I kind of know the reason. For me, this one particularly is a little huge, but it's also very thick in the pocket, and it doesn't have the great ergos to make that okay. It's not... Uh, it's not a value. It's at eight hundred, nine hundred, a thousand bucks, and for that price, you can buy three or four knives, which are almost as good in most functional ways. And it's not user maintainable, which means that every time you use this knife, you're getting closer to either sending this guy back to South Africa or retiring it due to other issues. All of those things add up to make this feel like it's still an incredible knife. But it's not a knife that I want. It's not a functional everyday carry knife. Instead, it's a collector's piece. It's, you know, an action piece. It's somebody who wants to do this all the damn day. This is a great way to do that. You're getting a Thorburn quality action with this just incredible freaking detent um, at, you know, a price that's way lower than his customs. But it just, it feels like a safe queen. It feels like a collector's piece. And so I can freely admit that this is an incredible knife. And if you're looking for something like that, if you want to feel this action, if you want to see something that's just so damn smooth, then do it. You're going to like it. But it's not something that appeals to me. I like to actually carry my knives, and I don't know that I would like to carry this knife. Well, I know that I didn't like carrying it. So I don't know. That's, that's where I land. I mean, it's incredible, but I have no desire. Turn that into whatever you'd like. These are my own biases speaking 100%. But, uh, yeah, there you go. So, I uh, hope this has been interesting, uh, that you've been hearing this review quite well. I uh, get it, Benny. Uh, okay. But mostly, I hope that you have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.